Good morning, everybody. I am so excited for today. For those of you that are new, welcome to our Breakthrough Mastermind group. The way that this is built is off the, the foundation of the eight lifestyle categories. So the intention of those eight lifestyle categories is to build a foundation for your personal and your professional life. So the mission is really to leverage knowledge to impact our lives personally and professionally. So again, we're, we're not really here to pitch our business. This is more of a, an intellectual group where people can share some beautiful perspectives, ideas, thoughts, experiences to really help one another. So again, today is on living environment. And this is one of the most critical topics. So I'm just going to say up front, I had two speakers that were supposed to be here today and they both backed out. That's my fault. I apologize for that up front. So we're going to do this a little bit differently today. So if everybody could grab either a pen, paper, use your computer or phone, whatever's good for you, whatever you have accessible, I'm going to go ahead and send this into the chat. These are going to be some of the areas that we're going to we're going to work through. So I just want you to be able to see this up front because some light bulbs might start to go off. So if everybody can see that there are four different categories. So one is the changes you need to make in your environment, whether that's your circle of influence, what you're listening to, what you're watching, whatever that looks like. Number two is list the top three positive influences that are currently in your circle. Number three, what would it do to your future to change or enhance one or two? And then four, what changes need to be made for a positive outcome? So before we really dive in, guys, I'm going to share two stories with you. Is everybody okay with, the, with two stories? Yeah? Cool. So yeah, I'm going to share this. And cool. this, is, this is really interesting to me. So there, there's a story that I, I read and there was, there's science behind this, right? So this individual, his car broke down. And when his car broke down, he had to start carpooling with his neighbor. And he loved to listen to rock and roll. Do we have any rock and roll fans in here? Raise the hands. A couple, okay, I love it. So this guy was a diehard rock and roll listener, right? That's all he listened to. The person he had to carpool with only listened to jazz. So up front, it might look like a little bit of a conflict, right? The office was about 45 minutes away. So for an hour and a half throughout the day, 45 there, 45 back, this rock and roll listener was listening to jazz intimately. Now, it's really interesting. What happened after three days was that he started to tap his foot in the car and kind of get into the rhythm of the jazz. After the fifth day, he was in the shower singing and humming some of those jazz tunes that he heard. So the, the point is, is that what you surround yourself with is going to inadvertently influence your thoughts, your actions, your emotions. It is so critical. And, and the, the crazy thing is, this happens to our subconscious, so you actually don't really have much control over it, you know, and, and some people experience this in their family, their friends, you know, their coworkers, whatever that looks like. So that, that's the first story I got for you, okay? The second story is a personal story. Has anybody in here heard of the goldfish theory? Are you familiar with this? Okay, so the, the goldfish that was, theory- That was my nickname in high school. Goldfish? Yeah. My you're memory have, is like less than 10 seconds long. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tell me about that story one time. Um, but the uh the goldfish theory is essentially that a goldfish can only grow to the size of its environment. So if it's in a small tank, it will only grow in proportion to the size of the tank. If it's in a large tank, it'll grow much larger. So this is my last story for you. And then we're really going to dive into the workshop portion. But my mom got this cast iron tub. And some of you may have seen these before. And she was thrilled. She's a very crafty woman, right? And she wanted to turn this into a pond. 
So she put it in her backyard and she painted it and she had a fountain and, and it was really cool. She had ivy kind of hanging over it and it was really aesthetic and pleasing. But we realized that we probably want to put fish in this pond. So one night we're at this carnival and you play these little carnival games and we ended up winning like four goldfish. We put the goldfish in the pond. But what we didn't realize about the goldfish was that blue herons, which she's in Maryland, are very prevalent there, would come and eat them. So after about two days, all the goldfish had been consumed by a blue heron or some other predator. So we had to replace the goldfish. So there used to be this loop that we would walk around the neighborhood. And at one point of the, the loop, there was an outlet pond. And this outlet pond was filled with goldfish. I think somebody just threw a couple in there and they just multiplied and there were hundreds of them. For about three months, I was going into this pond and I would go up as in the very deepest spot, which would come up to about my shoulders. And uh, I had my little net and I had my little bucket and I would go in there and catch all these little goldfish. And we just filled this pond up. And after a little while, the goldfish started to deplete again. So I had to go back and refill this goldfish supply. And when I showed up to the pond, animal control was there waiting for me. And I said, uh-oh, what is happening? So animal control had completely emptied the pond and they told me that I couldn't enter the area. And I said, well, what's going on? Apparently a neighbor had a boa constrictor and they had had this boa constrictor for about 12 years. So just so you know, boa constrictors can live up to 25 to 30 years, okay? This boa constrictor was over 12 years old. They had got it at about two years or something like that. And when it left the house, it was about six, seven feet long, right? This boa constrictor had been in that pond chomping on goldfish for the whole three month period that I had been entering catching these goldfish. At any point in time, I literally could have been attacked by a boa constrictor. But the interesting part about the story is that the boa constrictor had lived in these conditions for, like I said, 12 years. And it left the house at about six or seven feet roughly. In that three month time frame, the boa constrictor reached a size in total of 12 plus feet. So the whole purpose of this story is the fact that the environment is what allowed the boa constrictor to grow. The environment, when we had the first story, is what changed the thoughts, the patterns of that music influence. So when we think to ourselves, I think it's very, very important and imperative to think about your current living environment. So I know some of you jumped in a little bit after I had sent this in the group chat, but essentially, we're doing this a little bit different today. This is gonna be like a workshop. So what I'll ask you to do is if you can think about these four categories. So number one, again, is the changes that you currently need to make in your environment, whether that's your circle of influence, whether that's the music you listen to, how you're spending your time, whatever you have in the house, even, you know, if, if you, for example, if you've got a stomach for sweets and you get rid of sweets, you burn the boats, you're not going to eat the sweets. You know, number two, list the top three positive influences that are currently in your circle. Number three, what would it do for your future to change or enhance the first or the second? And then number four, what changes can be made for a positive outcome in your life currently? So with that being said, I'm curious if anybody would like to share either one of those four categories or maybe an experience or something that, that you've gone through that was conducive or non-conducive to your living environment. Is there anybody that wants to share? Hey. Hey, yes, yeah, so Keegan, can I ask what you mean by circling question two, please? Yes, yeah, so the circle of influence would be the top five people that you surround yourself with, whether that's family, friends, oh, yeah. whatever that looks like. So that would be the circle of influence. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Keegan, I'm happy to share. Um, I took a 
couple notes on uh, changes I need to make in my environment. Um, one of them, uh, diet and exercise. Um, being a former college athlete, I know what it's like to, I guess, what I what my body can handle as far as being in shape. I'm far from that. Um, and I need to eat better. So diet and exercise. Uh, the other thing would be time management, um, which I'm actually working with uh, Garrett and Conrad Ruiz for anybody who knows them. They're fantastic. Uh, and then the other one is to, uh, you actually had it in the, in the question to read. Um, I'm a horrible reader. Definitely need to consistently read some more. Those are so. Those are three uh, changes that I need to make to my environment. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to go through those real quick. But if anybody else would like to jump in and, and give any any thoughts or feedback on that, you know, this is an open discussion. Again, the point is to to be able to leverage knowledge that we all have. Everybody in here has thoughts or perspective that is beneficial for everybody. So you know, when we talk about the diet and exercise, so, one of my one of my big things, Dylan, is that your body is like the vessel, right? And, and, you know, I really like what Steve Jobs said. He said, you can eat your food as medicine or you can eat your medicine as food. So it's like an ecosystem, right? You could have a billion dollars in the bank, but if you are on your deathbed, it's worthless. Your body is so mm -hmm. critical. And when we talk about mindset, there are two ways to attack the mindset. One is go directly to the mind, which is very ephemeral. It's changing. It's difficult. Number two is to attack it through the body. So that, that's a critical component. When you talk about time management, I, I would love to hear um, where you think the, the, the dropping point is. Do you, are you spending too much time in particular areas or is it more yeah. about maximizing yeah. So I think for me, the time management, which has always been, you know, my uh, bane of my existence, I think it comes down to my inability to say no. Like, I don't want to say no. I love to take on any opportunity that's in front of me. So that packs the calendar pretty quickly. And, you know, I like to think that everything I'm doing at that time is a priority. But when you have too much on your plate, you know, it's, uh, it, it starts to get full. And things fall through the cracks so I need to organize more than just organize my time prioritize it as well um, so I think that's really does that make sense absolutely can anybody else relate to that time management I mean for yeah. me what I do is I calendar everything everything yep. goes into my calendar and it's at 15 30 minutes 45 hour so i'm able to you know chunk it out during the course of the day and i start super early so my first meeting sometimes starts at six or six thirty in the morning so i have some clients that like to meet early in the morning so i just accommodate it um and then i end my day usually about 8 p.m so just calendar everything in and i usually take a break midday because i need to take a break I hope so. so. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so just calendar in, you know, um, and just keep meetings short. That's what I love about zoom because you're able to like, you know, stop and go through and, you know, and just prioritize. Yeah. Thank Beautiful. you. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to calendar plot, King, what uh, often happens is that uh, you'll you'll sometimes find yourself that you've got two or more events at the same time, and then you have to prioritize. Like for example, um, uh, if I've uh, currently I'm applying for jobs, so if I've got an interview at this time, then unfortunately I would have to skip this session and go for the interview uh, because that's my number one priority. So I liked what Suzanne uh, said. And uh, yeah, these are my thoughts. Beautiful, Krishev. There's also an element of boundaries, 
that that's a big word that comes up often, right? When we talk about boundaries, and I think uh, Katrina said this really well in our family and relationships talk, but the boundaries are, it doesn't make you a bad person to say no, right? You've got to have that self-awareness and that self-compassion and prioritize your own time so that you can really give your full in the, in the areas that you're needed. So, and then the last one reading is, you know, what I would challenge you to do, Dylan, in terms of reading is just block out different times. Maybe you try it in the morning. Maybe you try it yeah. for lunch. Maybe you try it at night. Try a couple things, see what sticks. And we talked about compound interest and, and Hayden did a really good job of expressing the compound interest in your life. So when you get started, you can start with one page. There's nothing wrong with that. You start with the page. Be consistent. I'm doing that with this daily stoic one page good, good book beautiful sorry oh you're good and anybody else yeah. would anybody else like to share rosa yeah i would love to add something something that i had to speaking of boundaries like i had to set myself a saturday which works for me but it could be any day really where i take no commitments where if I need to, I stay in bed, in bed all day and I don't feel guilty about it. Or I go to the park and I'm in the park all day and no one can dare to interrupt that, <laughs> uh, which is, which comes with its own privileges because I don't have children, you know, like there's certain things that need to be accounted for, but connecting that to reading and wanting to read more like I have to make space in my brain in order to, because reading is a very active absorbing of information. So you have to be able to be present for it. I have to be present, be able to be present for it. But it took me making space in my own brain because throughout the week, I'm very like active and stimulated. So at the end of the day, I just need to turn off. Yeah. But having the time to like lull, lull around the park allowed me the time to be like, oh, I want to read and I'm reading consistently and I want to read more now. So in addition to the whole routine aspect of things, like there are steps and I think patience is a great virtue there. Yeah, no, I- It kind of or organically starts unfolding eventually. It's good advice. I appreciate that. I think it's interesting too. I think to comment, I see a lot of people saying the audiobooks. I absolutely agree. It's better than picking up the book for me. You know, somebody, my brain's all over the place. I just can't pick up a book and read it. So the audiobook is great. And then uh, talking about boundaries, just quickly, um, I very similar to Rosa. I, I have this like work hard, play hard type you know, uh, mindset where it's like, I got to cut it off at some point and I'm not thinking work at all. And just, same thing. It's like, email me, text me, whatever. It's fine. I'm not even going to look at it until I turn on the switch again. Um, so trying to get better at all that stuff. Thanks everybody. Beautiful. So real quick you know, guys, Dylan, I'm... what's funny is go ahead. Katie. Nope. I was going to literally just about to pass it to you. Cause I know you have to hop off soon. So go ahead, Larry. Yeah, no, I was just, it was, this is no lie. I sat at my desk this morning and I didn't even really know that we were going to be touching on this exact subject. I, know, I knew what we we're going to be overall talking about Keegan this morning, but I literally sat at my desk this morning and I blocked off all of my lunch times. <laughs> and just because, first of all, the company I work for, they're strongly encouraging, guys, take lunch. Look, try not to have as many meetings on Friday. Because Fridays, sometimes you're wrapping up the work week and maybe you're sending out reports or whatever you're doing, Dylan and, and Rose and the gang. But I literally sat here and blocked out lunchtime moving forward for the rest of the year. And you know what? Every once in a while, I'm going to have to take a meeting. But when it's all said and done, I do think it's so important just to be able to have that time. Rose, I'm wired the same way. Uh, I, I think I've got to get it done. I've got this text that came in. I've got this email. I've got this message. I've got to knock it out. I don't feel like I can rest at night until I've checked off all those boxes. Um, but I just really think it's so important to be able to take time for yourself. Uh, the work's still going to be there when you get back uh, from your break. And at the end of the day, take time for yourself. Kegan, that's all I had. 
Oh, those are those are those are great points. And again, that that's about the environment, right? It's it's setting up the environment that's conducive for you. Some people, for example, they require an absolutely clean environment to be productive. Some people, it doesn't matter as much. Um, I, I would love to to hear if anybody else has any thoughts or, or feedback, or I'm just going to kind of hot potato it. Okay. Yeah, Keys. I mean, I, as far as uh, as far as that environment uh, piece is concerned, I'm very much the same way. You know, if my room is dirty and I've got homework to do, or I've got I've got something to sit down and write, you know, I have to clean up the, the all that stuff. I have to pick up. I have to do laundry, and then like the list gets longer and longer and longer of stuff that I have to do before I do the main thing um, for the day. So that is definitely something that um, I try to keep my environment clean so that I don't that list doesn't get super super long, and I don't get thrown off. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we, we are unsuccessful in that. I'm with you on that, Colin. Definitely. Yeah, um, Keegan, I have something to share, dude. Go ahead, um, Matt. Uh, yeah, you know some of my background. And I'm going to give a story to everybody that I really don't want to have to tell, but it needs to be told. Um, I recently have tried to find a balance in my life. And between work and um, you know, chores and then, you know, obviously entertainment. And so for me, it was like, okay, I got to keep working because I still have more to do. And so one of the things I've talked about with my therapist is that, okay, well, the work is always going to be there. And the problem is that I think, okay, I need to keep going till the work is done. And so, you know, it'll never end, but you know, all of this, um, you know, the problems that everybody here, you know, and they're talking about, um, you know, it's, it's first world bullshit. And I'll tell you why. Um, unfortunately, um, I had a friend who died in the building collapse. And um, that's been very hard on me. And um, they found his body yesterday. And so, um, in terms of everything that goes on with everybody, in terms of their problems, it's, it can all be fixed. But when somebody dies in, in, in such a tragedy like that, you know, you, 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 you have a very different perspective on everything that goes on in your life and how it can all be changed, you know, because of your environment. And so I'm going to start living my life a lot better because of what happened. Matt, thanks for sure. sharing. If you uh, if you don't mind, just go ahead and, and, and take a deep breath. I know that's that's tough to get out, right? So thank you for that. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, and I think it brings up the point. You know, it's about it's thanks, about the Matt. time management. Look, time is our biggest commodity, and you know when we put this into perspective, what Matt just shared, it's it's about how. Go ahead, Alvaro. Unmute. Sorry about that. Uh, and Matt, sorry for your loss. What a, it always puts our feet on the ground. And, and when it comes tragic like that, very, very challenging. And, uh, you know, for me, from what I'm hearing from the environment, obviously, is what a huge impact it has on our lives. I think that I've heard quite a bit about time management. And my suggestion would be to change that to activity management as opposed to time management, because the reality is, is that we can't manage time. We have no control over time. Uh, as Matt so clearly pointed out, we don't know what happens in the blink of an eye and we have no control over a lot of what happens. And so what we do have control over a little bit is activity. If we can change the word to activity management, it becomes more manageable, more tangible. We can't grab time. You can't actually put your hands on it. Whereas activities, that's one of the things that we can. And that what happens then with time is time becomes a resource. Now it's the only resource that we have 
which we cannot renew. We can have more water, we can get more oxygen, we can't get more time. It comes and it goes. So be very precious with your allocation of time as a resource when designing your activities. Matt, again, my heart breaks. I, I, I hope the memories hold you for a long time, buddy. Yeah, I mean, his name is Mike Altman, and uh, he was found, his body was found yesterday. And ironic enough, you know, just to um, share this with all of you, is that I had a meetup, you know, several years ago. And um, unfortunately, for mental health, believe it or not, and it failed because nobody ended up showing up. And that was extremely heartbreaking when I had, at some point, 10 or 15 minute, you know, to, to 10 or 15 people there. And, you know, I learned a lot of li li uh, leadership skills. I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for that group to be able to express myself like, you know, like Madonna. So, but ultimately, um, what ended up happening was, is that um, I had lost contact with a lot of those people. And so when I realized that Mike had lived in the building, I started playing Sherlock. And so I had a, I went through emails that I, that I got from him and he had a, a Breitling machine. Breitling is the watch company. And so when I found the address, I didn't remember the building. I've been there once. I didn't know the building name. I didn't know the address. I started looking at news to see what the, the building number was. And once I figured out what the building number was, I was actually on a Zoom. In fact, uh, it was uh, Suzanne's Zoom. And um, my, my, the life of me just got sucked out like a vacuum. And so I'm like, okay, well, who do I know or who would I still have the number for for the group? So I'm thinking, okay, who did Mike talk to associate with this guy, Dave? And so I told Dave, you know, uh, when, Wednesday or uh, Monday morning, I had not spoken with the guy in over two years. I called him at work. He's one of like, what the hell is Matt calling me for? I said, look, dude, um, I think Mike died and he was in that building. And, you know, he didn't believe me, but it, he found an article on one of the local stations here in South Florida and he confirmed exactly what happened and indirectly because he didn't know and none of the other people that were still talking to him knew I was still hosting a meetup because he told everybody, um, you know, um, about the group and about six or seven of us showed up last night to honor him. And that group didn't end well for me. There was animosity toward me because of the fact that people didn't always like everything I did or said or how I ran the group. But ultimately, all that um, never came to pass last night because it hadn't been for me. Nobody would have known that he had died. And so after the group, ironic enough, we, without knowing, you know, they found his body in, in the wreckage. And then I told everybody else in the group, I said, if you want to reach out to anybody else, you know, that, um, you know, I'm here for you. But Keegan knew about this. Him and I discussed this even privately. But the thing is, life is too short. And so that is something that has changed my environment. I mean, you can't sit there and write this shit in, in a movie. And so this is something that you never want to live in your life. You never want to see a person that you know or that you were friends with, see on them on the news and to see that they are dead. That is, it is the worst feeling. I mean, the amount of deep, uh, you know, uh, you know, a sadness I have is like a, a goddamn like Grand Canyon. I've never felt this level of deep sadness and sympathy forever because like a part of me has died. And so to see it exasperated on the news, not only locally, but nationally and even worldwide, it's, it's, it's hard to, to comprehend that type of loss. So to go back to Keegan's questions about how you're going to change your environment, I'm going to live my, my life a, a lot more and not be so much of a chicken shit. You know, I'm going to be grateful to the fact that I wake up every day because Mike didn't, doesn't have that. He lost two kids. His parents are still around. They lost a son. He has a daughter. I'm sorry, a sister. You know, the, the, they lost that. So the whole domino effect and all the other families that have been affected because of what happened. So um, it's been it's been bad. I mean, I can't tell you um, how much crying I have done the past four or five days. So. Matt, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, you know, I, I think Alvarez said it really well, and, and it just comes it comes back into play. Um, Ramesh, I know that you have to hop here in a minute, so I, I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to, to share anything, you know, again, in, in relation to, to environment. 
Yeah, and I really appreciate this. And, uh, and I'm really sorry, Matt. It's really sad yeah, because I've had a lot of deaths in my own family this last year. I lost an uncle, uh, two uncles yeah, from coronavirus, and I lost a cousin from the coronavirus in the last year. And uh, I can really feel what you're going through, my friend. And, uh, and uh, thank you for your shares. And with me, you'd be like, uh, as we're speaking about like death quite a lot and lifestyle. Yeah, when I lost my family members, I started to really get more conscience uh, of my life and my actions <clears throat> and uh, how I should be balancing my life more. Because in the past, I used to have, a, because I work as a counsellor and an addiction coach in the UK, I used to have a lot of friends <clears throat> ring me about like their problems. But now what I'm doing is that I'm keeping a lot of uh, boundaries with uh, people and I'm really balancing my life now between like my work and my any activities that I'm doing and my uh, partner and even my counselling clients. I'm really balancing it all. But I feel the most important thing for, for me uh, in order to change is to have more uh, conscience about life because losing family and friends which which has happened to Matt is really it's sad and it's really helped me understand about life more and uh, it's raising the conscience of like life and uh, keeping boundaries which means that I can spend more time with the things which will add value yeah, to my life and the life of the loved ones and uh, boundaries is really tough because in the past I let anybody into my life but I feel that in the last year and uh, so, so I've really grown as a person and I'm keeping more boundaries and uh, this has made my life a lot more better and uh, Matt, Matt I'm really sorry about what's really been been going on with your life and uh, I can I can fully understand and I'm really sorry and uh, appreciate the shares today yeah and I'm sorry for your loss too for people that are COVID my brother is in the Navy he had a friend in his 20s with a newborn and because he vaped he had a compromise in his system and he died of COVID too. So you, you never know when your time is going to be. And so, um, you know, if anything, you know, my story today of my friend unfortunately dying in the building collapse should tell you how you sit there and you need to change your environment and, you know, your influences and how you make positive, you know, outcome. So, um, you, you, our time on this planet is so short and, you know, it was like, I think a disturbed song, you know, we're only lines, uh, you know, chalk on, you know, the, you know, the board, you know, or the asphalt only to be washed away. So we are a pin drop of the spec of the spectrum of time on this planet. And, um, um, you know, I'm going to start my life a lot more, you know. Well, which part of America are you, friend, Matt? Excuse me? Uh, which part of America was your friend based? Um, I didn't exactly hear all the questions. What you say? Uh, Florida. Florida. Which part of the U.S.? Oh, oh, oh. He lives. Surfside is the is the Greater Miami area, and so um, I had met him through the mental health meetup that you know that I had had, and you know he was the last friend that I had, and unfortunately um, that happened. But you know even last night, the positive us. change in the income. You've got all us, Matt. All these people. Yeah, it's uh, it is it is so heart you know, wrenching, you know, to have to go through this because this to me is is my nine eleven, and for all the other people that have lost people in that building, this is their nine eleven. And so I'm really sorry, my friend. I'll be praying for you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Believe me, I have never cried on a Zoom before. You've all seen a side of me that nobody's ever seen. I feel like I've gone through like my lifetime TV movie of the week here for all the wrong reasons. So, um, but ultimately the one thing that uh, this has taught me is to be truly yourself for the positive and negative. You will not see too many people crying on Zoom. You will not see too many people telling you the story. You know, nobody here, unfortunately, and thankfully has the connection that I do to somebody who was in that building who went down. And um, that's how you have to change your environment is that, you know, something as profound and prolific as a major tragedy causes you to rethink everything, you know, and hey, now nothing is well for Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, no, I appreciate the share. We're, we're running out of time. Um, I just want to make sure that, that everybody else gets a chance to speak as well. So if it's all right, let's do a little bit of a round robin and then we can, we can come back with, with a, the time that we have left. Is that okay with you? Go for it. Yeah, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, a couple people. So Sandra, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on environment. I know that you had mentioned the audio being powerful for you. And I love that approach because, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but a vehicle is like a school on wheels. You can learn and listen to anything when you're in the car, especially for those of you that are in New York that have long commutes, right? So Sandra, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, well, as a realtor, I'm in the car all the time, so it gives me a lot of time to listen, and I tend to get it to appointments early, so that gives me some additional time, and um, I feel like while I'm driving, I can, I can focus more because driving is sort of automatic in many ways, but um, I also wanted to comment on um, your sphere of influence and how you spend your day. I feel like I'm always trying to find ways to improve how I'm spending my time and uh, be cognizant of when I'm doing things that are not, I don't want to say productive because I feel like everything is can be productive in a way, but things that take away from my, my happiness <laughs> or productivity or um, growth, for example. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I'll just just a side note here, what would you consider? Would you consider your car clean or unclean? My car is clean. Love it. Okay. I know people have different standards there, right? And that's that's again that's part of that environment. So whether that's the car, the apartment, the 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 house, whatever that looks like, it's it's a critical component. Um Ashley, I think you, you had something you wanted to share. Yeah, I'll share. Um, so I just had kind of an example. This past Sunday, I had the opportunity to like not have my kids for the day, which initially like was not a fun thing for me, um, just given my circumstance. But I kind of like once they were out the door, I was like, all right, well, I could vacuum, do laundry, clean the bathroom, like all these things that like I couldn't do necessarily with my kids without interruptions. But then I felt so empowered. because so I was like, no, I'm going to the mall with my mom. Like I just like one of those things where I had the decision, got out of the house and it was way better. Like if I had stayed home in my like own environment, I probably wouldn't have had as good of a day. Um, but also living environment, I work from home all the time. So if my house is not clean, I can't do it. Like I can't sit at my desk knowing that I have like a kitchen that's dirty or, you know, things on the floor. So those are just things that I keep up with because no one else is going to do it. Like I'm the one that's doing it. Um, so those are just things that like I keep up with that help me have like a better mindset each day. Um, and then I think Dylan's not on this call anymore, but something he mentioned was like diet and exercise. And you have mentioned um, just kind of eliminating the presence of things. Whereas for me, I find it more helpful to actually keep a few things around um, because then I'm sort of reminded that I'm making a decision not to eat cookies or not to drink Coke or things like that. And I found that since I've begun um, exercising regularly, consuming more water regularly, I'm not as quick to like go for chips or go for cookies. Like I find myself not even wanting them. Um, and it's just been amazing like how things kind of piggyback and like, it's not necessarily like, oh, I don't want to sabotage the work that I'm doing or whatever. It's like, my mind doesn't even go there anymore. Like and it's just very empowering. That was beautiful. That there's brings a, up, go ahead. I mean, there's a lot of things that resonated uh, with me and, and all the things that you, you guys have been talking about. I, I, the way that I kind of summarize some of the things that we've we've said, and I think it, it kind of 
uh, is a culmination of a lot of the, the self-control part of it is it's, it's a whole lot easier to, to not make the decision when the decision's not on the table. Um, wow. So like, it, it, wow. and it's kind of like what you said, it's easy to not eat cookies if, if they're not in the house, but like, right. um, <laughs> I, I've been trying to stop smoking. So I actually went to all my local bodegas. I said, Hey, if I come in and try to buy any tobacco products, don't let me have it. Um, and so now they've kind of, bla- they, they made the agreement with me that they'd blacklist me and they won't sell me anything. Um, Beautiful. so now even if I make the decision, Hey, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to, I'm going to take back my, my, uh, my control of this. And they're like, no, you told me not to, and I'm going to hold you to it, you know? Um, so taking the option off the table is a really good way because I don't trust myself to have that kind of self-control, but like, I also battle with like OCD kind of tendencies where I have to have something a very particular way. It has to be this way. And there's no like rhyme or reason to it. And those thoughts are super invasive. Those just come in and be like, you have to walk to that tree and then you can turn around. You can't turn around before it. And so when those invasive thoughts come in, I, I kind of have to be intentional about, no, because you told, because I told myself I have to do it that way. I'm not going to do it that way because I'm going to conquer you. you. You're not, you, you can't control me. I can tr- control me because my subconscious is not the same as my conscious, you know? And so it's, it's making war with those things and actually actively battling it, um, which is really, really difficult to do because they're invasive thoughts for a reason, because they're very powerful and they're very controlling. So that, that's like kind of what I had to say. That's beautiful, Garrett. Um, three things come to mind with what you and as, I, as I just said. As I spit into my bottle, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, so, yeah, so, so one of the big quit. things, have you guys ever heard the term burn the boats? Maybe. Okay. So burn the boats is a concept when Caesar invaded Persia and essentially they were outnumbered and it was a a ridiculous odd, you know, the, the Caesar and his army had way less people than they did in Persia. And essentially they were all intimidated. Right. So he said, what I want you to do is burn the boat. So the only option we have is either success or death. So they burned all the boats. And, And that's kind of goes back to that point. If you don't have it, there is an option you're not going to turn to it, right? That was the first point. The second point is the identity. You know, once you change your identity and you no longer affiliate yourself with that previous identity, you can really start to make a massive change. And there are many stories I can give on this. But the third point is also an affiliation, if, if you've heard of, and I know Alvaro can really speak to this, but if we talk about neuroassociative conditioning, if you associate massive amounts of pain with a previous act, habit, or emotion, then you can change it. And then you reaffiliate that new act, habit, or emotion with an immense amount of pleasure. So th- those are three things that really stood out to me, Garrett, based on what you said and, and what Ashley said. Um, I'm curious if, if Marlene or Prashiv have anything. Good morning. Thank you so much. And, and Matt, I love it. I love what you've done with your, your background there. Yeah. And my heart wow. is with you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. By the way, Keegan, wasn't that Tony Robbins who said that about the near associations? Yeah, he, he definitely speaks on, on NAC for sure. Alvaro's, uh, that's what Alvaro is specializes in. He can definitely speak to that at, at the highest caliber, though. Uh, Keegan, I'm going to talk just real quickly about boundaries, and I'm going to tie it into number four, where you make changes that create a positive outcome. I am a very people person, always have been. And when I moved here to where I'm living currently, I've been here almost five years, I became friends with someone that... um, As time went on, it became actually a toxic relationship for me. And I didn't realize it until I was really deep in it. And I had to set boundaries with this person, which thank you, I've been able to very successfully. But what happened was this person would dump all this stuff on me. And basically it was garbage. And instead of taking and putting the garbage to the curb 
and never dealing with it again, I found that I was falling into the drama side and I was cleaving to it. And I was, I was all caught up in it. And what it did was it became it was making me more of a negative person and that's not me. I didn't feel comfortable with it. I started actually having some health issues and mentally I was way off. So there are going to be times that boundaries are actually involving specific person or people because having that person out of my life, very, very limited interactions and they understand, they understand why, and they understand there are boundaries and putting, defining the boundaries is number one. Keeping the boundaries consistent is absolutely number two. And number three, there are gonna be times even at whenever I interact with this person that sometimes I have to just give a look and all of a sudden those boundaries become very evident to this person and I don't have to say anything. So for good mental health, for good emotional health, for uh, positivity, uh, for making a major change in my life that um, has made a huge difference in me personally and emotionally, physically, spiritually, the whole thing, setting that boundary and keeping that boundary and putting that toxic person on the outside has made a huge difference. And I hope maybe this will speak to somebody and help somebody in their day to day. Well, Marlene, I can tell you, I've been in the same situation and um, it is really easy to get caught up and I lost yes. about five years in it. And it's, mm -hmm. It is very difficult to set those boundaries, but once you do, you really, really can feel the difference. Absolutely. Thank you yes. for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, and again, that brings up the point of the circle of influence, which comes back to the environment. I'll give you another example. Let's say that you go into the gym and you've got a particular physique in mind that you want to achieve. Well, you know, if it's going to be a, a lean figure or whatever that looks like, you may not go to, to the guy that uh, is at the snack shop you know, that that's 600 pounds. He's probably not that role model, you know, not the right circle of influence. But if you go to the person that you're aspiring to be like, and you control your circle of influence, well, those people are going to push and propel you forward. So I love that you shared that Marlene, because I'm going to tell you from personal experience, it's not always friends and, and, uh, and loved ones. It also can be family. And sometimes people feel like, oh, well, that's my family. That's my blood. That's, that's somebody I love and cherish. You know, I, it would be wrong of me to set a boundary or to take that person out of my circle of influence. Well, it's not to say that they're still not in your heart and that you don't love them, but it's quite simply saying that you know that you have a great purpose here. And if you don't set those boundaries, you're not able to serve that purpose, which ultimately is disserving all the people that you're here to serve. So I think it's such a critical component, even if it's a family member to say, hey, look, you know, mom, dad, brother, sister, I love you to death. And we're still going to talk and I'm still going to see you at family gatherings, but I just can't spend every day with you because of that negative environment. It's not conducive to what I'm building and it keeps me trapped. Just like that boa constrictor story, you know, it, it kept the, the boa constrictor small. And the same thing is true for you. Once you expand that horizon and that environment, then you can start to grow. So Chris Shiv, Alvaro, Rosa, do you guys have anything else that you would like to interject? Sure, yeah, I can add a thing or two. Um, I think that will cover or tie together all the things that we've talked about really is what I find really, really important for myself is scheduling times, like literally putting times on the calendar where I get to be angry, I get to be sad, I get to like really understand what's going on so that then I'm able to, before things get too crazy, catch why I'm starting to be drawn to behaviors that I would like not engage in. 
which could be cookies, which could be smoking, which could be this and this and that, but really putting things like that moment times like that on the schedule where my body actually is able to process and heal the way it knows how, like if I need to, like it knows what to do. It knows to cry, it knows to punch a wall, like, you know, think it's important, especially like these days when we're, when freaking buildings are falling, like, you know, like that's not a normal thing that we engage in. And also like in the importance of networks and places where I am able to be truly myself and knowing the fact that, thank you, Matt, for sharing what you've shared, because I think it's so important, not only for the person who is sharing, it's it's a healing experience and cathartic experience, but also for everyone who's listening, who's like, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, it's, and is the thing, thing is, and that is it, it makes all the things that we go through and our quote unquote first world problems a lot smaller. And the fact that, you know, you, you, you never know when your time is up. And that's one thing that even changed about my environment, the thing that that Keen was talking about, is that if you told me 24 hours that, you know, Matt, you'll be crying on a, on a Zoom call, I would have told you to put down the crack pipe. So, you know, I did something that I didn't think I would ever do. And right now, you know, quite frank, frankly, I don't give a fuck. And the reason why is because his life is too short. If somebody's going to sit there and hold against me that I'm pouring my heart out and I'm mourning the loss of a friend who died in a building collapse, then I don't want you in my life. And it just goes back to what you were saying about having people that are like Britney and they're toxic and you don't want them in your life and you don't need them in your life. So what better way to shit test somebody than to cry your heart out because of a, a national tragedy and to figure out who really wants to be there for you or not? Can I just read something real quick? I was reading, I'm reading this, which is I'm a little overdue, but I'm finally like in the place to receive this. And then there is a chapter called Thank You for Being Angry, which I was very um, inspired by because something that they say is, when the person of color becomes angry, perhaps they're angry about something we said or did or about comment or action by someone else or about racism in general. We may take it personally and back off in response fearing the relationship is falling apart. We fear we aren't liked anymore or have been found out to be racist. For a person of color, this may be a time of hope. The relationship can become more honest the anger may be an attempt to test the depths and the possibilities of friendship. The person may be open about their feelings to see how safe we are, hoping we will not desert them. I think that's so, so beautiful and so translatable to all parts of our lives, really. Sorry, I was very passionate about this. <laughs> oh, no, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, Rosa. Um, look, guys, so we're about to close out. It is 10.58. We only have about a minute and a half left. So if there's anybody, Chris Shiv or Alvero or, or anybody that uh, hasn't had too yeah. much of an opportunity to speak, Chris Shiv, go ahead, bud. Yeah, so uh, uh, basically, well, basically one of the things that I have started doing or I've started practicing is trying to be in the present moment and to listen to what people say. And I have noticed that when I speak to Keegan, when we catch up one to one, uh, Keegan has good listening skills, which is why, uh, which is why I'm probably the last person now to speak because I was just being conscious that this is the time to listen to the other person and when there's an opportunity you can then share your thoughts so uh just overall i'm trying to be conscious and sometimes um uh, there's a tendency that we all as human beings have is the 
compulsiveness, but sometimes we just got to take a hard, a hard decisions because uh, whatever we do has to be conscious. If it's compulsive, it's not sustainable. So, so sometimes there are situations where you where you where you don't want to take a decision, where you want to carry on with what you're doing, but you have to be conscious and you have to know why you are taking that decision and then uh, move on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Krishev. Yeah, and, and taking that position is so critical. Again, when, when we talk about our environment, we want to make sure that we are being very conscious of, of what we're reading, what we're listening to, who we're surrounding ourselves with, what our house looks like in our car and all of these little factors that make up our composition. It's, it's just a critical piece. So guys, I'm going to close out, but just before we hop off, is there anybody else that has any last minute thoughts or, or anything they want to share? Okay. Well, look guys. Yes. appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Keegan. I yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Keegan. Of course, of course. So, guys, yeah, this was my first meeting, and I really enjoyed my time with you all. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you again, guys. Again, I appreciate thank all you, your thoughts Keegan. and your feedback on the living environment. I hope you have an amazing day, and hope to see you soon. I appreciate. It. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take Bye. care. Have a good rest of Tuesday. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Keegan. <laughs>